Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a first for my channel and uh, it's going to be a first impression. Um, you know, sometimes you find something in your fragrance journey that, um, you know, really moves you to kind of share it with the world. And if you know kind of what I've said in the past about the fragrances I own, none of these are gifted to me by the big brands. I pay for all of these with my own money. Uh, I do the research myself. I'm not sent bottles for a review and all that good stuff. But uh, there was a fragrance recommendation that I saw on Galen's channel, The Etherealist. Um, and he said that Thomas from Early Greek, who is one of the noses that I would say I trust the most when it comes to some of these vintage fragrances that I love so much, recommended a fragrance from the house of Critzia. And it's a women's fragrance that came out in 1985, and it's called Teatro a la Scala. Now, um, apparently the La Scala, as it's known, uh, is an abbreviation for the Teatro a la Scala, which is an opera house that opened in 1778 in Milan, Italy. It's one of the most prestigious opera houses in the world. All of the best singers have sung there, so forth and so on. Um, and if you look at this bottle, look at the bottle presentation. Uh, it is very beautiful. It's a, it's a splash, by the way. So once I heard that this was discontinued and what it was compared to, it's compared to a couple fragrances, which I'll, I will show you in a second. But I just want to touch on a subject that I don't think gets talked about very much, and that's buying these splash bottles. A lot of people don't like to buy a splash bottle because there's no spray. People like to spray. Well, I'll just give you a little story of how I ended up acquiring this. So I went and I looked on eBay, which sometimes the prices can be brutal. This is a 50 ml bottle, by the way. Um, and so what I did is I went on eBay and I noticed that all of the spray bottles were double or triple what this splash bottle was selling for. So they wanted 100 bucks, $150. I even saw 100 ml of this for $200. And there weren't very many of these for sale. This is long discontinued, apparently. But, um, so what I did is, you know, I, I went to the, the best price, which is the splash bottle, and I made a little bit of a lower offer, and I got this 50 ml for $40. And what I do is I get myself these 10 ml decants. You can buy them from Amazon, you know, seven or eight for 10 bucks or eight bucks or something. Uh, and I've got a label maker, and I just basically decant it into the, oh, this isn't going to come off very easily, but you, you decant it into uh, the decanter, and, I've used, and I use these little droppers. If it fits in, you put the dropper in, you decant it into your spray. Uh, if it doesn't fit, you've got your, I got these little funnels. You can buy these on the internet for very cheap as well in bulk, and you just basically, you know, funnel it into these little sprayers, and then you carry it around, spray with you, whatever you want. But so I got this 50 ml for $40, and they're selling the 50 ml sprays for double, triple that even. The 100 mls are going for 200 bucks. So I just wanted to share that story with you guys real quick, because a lot of people were asking me about the splash bottles, that they don't like to buy splash because, you know, it's harder to apply. They don't like to dab. You don't have to dab. You can. You can twist this off and, you know, just kind of dab some on, um, you know, but it, it's tougher and it's not as easy to apply and I like to spray. But I also like to get the best deal and make my dollar stretch as far as I can. So anyways, just a quick story. A lot of people were asking me about the whole splash bottle. Now, the House of Critzia is known for a couple other fragrances. Um, Critzia Womo is one of the best green fragrances from the 80s. And Critzia Moods Womo is actually one of the best patchouli fragrances I've ever smelled. This might be my favorite patchouli, masculine patchouli. Um, again, another Thomas from early Greek recommendation. So, um, again, that's a channel that uh, I've noticed some of the best reviewers, by the way, I have to say this. Some of the best reviewers have the lowest subscriber count. So if you look at some of these channels that have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 subscribers versus the ones that have 100,000, 200,000, 250,000, you know, some of them have over a million. You know who we're talking about there. Um, and the content that those guys put out is crap because they're just putting them out for the YouTube algorithm. So sometimes if you find someone that has a lower subscriber count, 
um, you know, you will know that they're real fragrance heads that want to talk about real issues, not just put out the new top 10, you know, panty dropper clone list or whatever you want to call it, TJ Maxx finds or stuff like that. So you're not going to be able to hype up a fragrance from 1985 that's discontinued that there's only three or four offerings on the internet about. You know, that's not the type of fragrances that uh, those guys hype. And I don't care about hyping fragrances, but I wanted to share this with you because when I smell this, um, my reaction is literally, and by the way, this is literally a first impression, not this second, but I've been wearing this for the last three hours. So this is my first take on it. And my first impression is this. Oh my fucking God. It is so good. Um, I mean, I mean, this completely blew me away. It is... <laughs> Um, let me show you a couple fragrances that are in the ballpark. Um, YSL's Opium from 1977. Uh, this came out in 1985, if I didn't mention that, by the way. Good year. My birth year. Uh, birth year of the Ram and the Duck, I think. Uh, and this came out in 1977. It is also compared to a fragrance that I've never smelled, which is Cocoa. Uh, I've never smelled the vintage cocoa, and I would love to, but apparently this is um, opium and cocoa mix. But there's also um, there's also a touch of poison, because there's a beautiful tuberose note in this. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like vintage Shalimar. If you like these type of fragrances that I'm telling you about, man or woman, don't listen to the stuff that says that this is a, you know, big shoulder pads. You have to have big hair and, and you know, be a female to wear this. Absolutely not. Um, this is one of the most beautiful ambery civet fragrances that I have ever smelled. From first impression, instantly jumps to top 10 female fragrances I love to wear. Maybe even top five. You know, this is right up there with opium. I have enjoyed every second of this so far. And I want to give you the note breakdown because uh, I talked a little bit yesterday when we were talking about Lapidus Porome of that animalic beeswax that I love. And actually the beeswax note in this, this is beeswax, not honey. Um, but the beeswax note in this mixed with the civet and incense and benzoin um, is what really made me just blind pull the trigger on this. And I am so glad I did. I almost want to go get a backup bottle because the seller that had this had seven of them. He was asking 50 bucks. I, I offered him 40 and he took it. I might go get a, get a backup so I have another 50 ml. Um, but the notes are aldehydes, coriander, fruity notes, and bergamot in the top. And by the way, aldehydes sometimes I really struggle with. I mentioned there's a fragrance called Rare Petroleum from Histoise de Parfum that I actually blind bought. And the aldehydes and oud in that really struggle with ald aldehydes sometimes. But these are some of the most beautiful aldehydes I have ever smelled. I, I don't think I've ever smelled such aldehydes in the top. Um, and you instantly get that warmth of benzoin. You can tell that there's real oak moss in this. Uh, the depth of this fragrance, it has absolutely blown my mind so far today. Absolutely blown my mind. This might end up being the buy of 2022 for me. I mentioned Creed's Venezia, by the way, uh, in previous videos was the uh, find of 2021 for me. And one of my uh, subscribers who is big in the FragCom and we, and we talked to him on... Um, you know, the um, streams, Fosco, he bought that fragrance and, and came back and said, you're absolutely right. The quality of the ingredients is fantastic. It smells like there's real Mysore sandalwood in there, all this stuff. That's an 80s Creed fragrance that no one talks about. Um, so this, uh, the aldehydes in the top, the fruitiness in the top, but then you instantly get that benzoin and you get that animalic beeswax mixed with old school carnation, and then the big floral heart, which is rose, ylang lang, tuberose, jasmine, orris, and geranium. Now, normally, tuberose is a no-no for me because it is very feminine. Um, it, and it's very big and very loud and very lush and very in your face. Um, but I did score this um, middle of last year. 
So I've had it six, seven months now, and I really enjoy this fragrance. Even though this is big and loud and in your face, this also has a big tuberose. Um, and I would say that this is in the same category uh, as poison, but it reminds me more of opium because there's that benzoin and incense, which uh, opium has. I think there's much more clove in this. I actually think this is more masculine um, than Teatro alla Scala, if you will. This, this is a little bit more feminine to me, uh, but you know what? I don't even care because it's so good that I, I don't care if someone says that you smell like a girl wearing this. It is just, it is fantastic perfumery. Fan, fantastic. If, if, um, if Roja Dove put this out today, or if uh, the House of Papillon, or I don't know, pick your favorite niche house. If they put this out today, people would be screaming, jumping from the rooftop, tearing their hair out, writing in Fragcom about, you know, the next, you know, best uh, beast mode scent and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the fact that I got this for $40, value for money is outstanding through the roof. Um, and there is in the base, just so you know, there's oak moss, patchouli, vetiver, and musk to mix with that civet and incense and benzoin. So the incense and the benzoin definitely harkens back to opium, EDT, which I love. Um, <laughs> I have the same reaction, by the way, when I smell this. As when I, you know, when I, when I smell this, I just go, oh my God. And I, and this does, this does it for me. Um, this absolutely does it for me. I wish I would have known about this a year or two ago. I wish someone would have told me about it. Um, I'm so happy to have a bottle, even if I don't get another backup, which I probably should because this is backup worthy. Um, I don't hype fragrances because honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not in that type of. Uh, I'm not in that type of environment. I just want to share, uh, you know, the love that I have for, for finding these fragrances with someone else. Because if it wasn't for Thomas telling Galen and Galen putting out a video about his four or five fragrances he found last year that blew him away. And he said something in that video, by the way, which I should repeat. And that's that there are many, um, old school masculine fragrances like this, Critzia Womo or uh, Moods, or Balenciaga Por Homme, or, you know, Vintage Azaro, or, you know, you name it. There are many old-school masculine fragrances where the prices have been really shot up. Patau Por Homme and Patau Por Homme Privé are great examples of that. Eight, nine hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars a bottle, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, now that I think some men like me, because five years ago, I never would have worn a woman's fragrance. Never. I would have thought, you know, you're insane. Men wear men fragrances and women wear women fragrances. Well, now that I think more and more people are starting to understand that a flower is a flower and a flower doesn't have a smell, a, a gender, and all that stuff is just marketing. Um, and I think as more niche heads, as more fragrance lovers like like us and probably the people following my channel come to realize that. The women's fragrances of old that have this type of quality before reformulations, before, you know, mass appeal and before the rise of the heavy synthetics and all that stuff, that this type of perfumery can be had for $40 for 50 ml is just, you know, Roja Dove would charge $500 for this. Absolutely. And people would pay it. And people would sing the praises of the greatest perfume they've ever smelled. Trust me, uh, if you can hunt this down, this is a rare opportunity to get a big value for money for, for not a lot. I mean, not a lot of money. 40 bucks uh, is not a lot. And um, what this offers, I don't know longevity, but it feels like it's going to be a 15-hour scent. I'm telling you. I mean, this is three hours in, um, four hours in. And oh my God, it is just, it is amazing. Uh, this is, so anyways, I I don't know if I even have the words to describe, you know, how 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 much this fragrance shocked me today. You know, this, this really took me back. Um, 
And I'm sure with the Opera House reference, uh, you think about, you know, fat women up on stage singing huge notes to the opera, to the chorus, uh, you know, that type of being able to carry a note on for five minutes. And, and, and I could totally see, you know, this is a, uh, this is a, a fragrance that will announce your presence. I was actually changing my wife's oil today, sitting in a, um, uh, in a room with 10 guys waiting to get their oil changed. And I walked in wearing this and I swear every single one of them stopped and because they could probably all smell me. Uh, but it, it is an amazing scent. Um, the civet in this, it's not like the Koros, it's not like, you know, the heavy civet where you're gonna, it's not like, um, Salome or anything like that where it's really gonna take you back. This, the civet in this is very intelligently done. This is very wearable. Um, a night out, a, a, a night out, you know, if you're wearing like a tux and you are going to the opera, I don't know if I could think of a better scent, you know, um, maybe I would wear this instead of Roja's, uh, Danger Parfum or, um, you know, the, uh, couple other of the more expensive scents that I have, I might reach for this first. Uh, you know, this is right up there instantly. You know, you could instantly tell that it's got that quality and it really did. It blew my mind. I mean, that's, that's the only way I can put it. It blew my mind. So I'm not trying to hype this up. I am literally giving you my take. If I hated it, I would tell you, I don't do many first impressions because tastes can change over full wearings. It is uh, 40 degrees out, 47 degrees out and rainy in Texas. Um, oh my God, it is just amazing. It is amazing. I am blown away. Uh, so I wanted to share this with the world. If you can get this, don't be scared to buy a, a splash. You can still save a lot of money uh, just decanting it. And then you can carry this decant around and reapply if you really want to. I don't think you need to with this scent though. Um, and so anyways, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot because... Uh, those seven bottles that the guy had uh, at 50 bucks are probably going to be gone in no time. But this is um, this is worthy to share with the rest of the fragrance community. Uh, it is Critzia Teatro Alla Scala uh, from 1985, long discontinued. Oh, and there's a beautiful rose note in here. Fantastic. I mean, just I highly recommend this to uh, perfume lovers, real perfume lovers. Uh, not the people who are necessarily niche snobs and think if it's not expensive, it sucks. No, this is for the real fragrance connoisseurs. Uh, if you want to smell something that is amazing, just like the original opium for women, to me is amazing. One of the best creations of all time. Um, and I know it harkens back to youth do from Estee Lauder and all that stuff. But, um, you know, some of these women scents... If you're a man, do not sell yourself short and overlook these like I did for so many years because I think Galen is exactly correct. I think that, you know, once people like us start to realize what is just sitting out there on on shelves that, uh, you know, is collecting dust because, um, you know, we're too stubborn-headed or bullheaded or whatever it is to try stuff like this. Uh, I think once people realize what's out there in some of the women's fragrances, the prices on these are going to go through the roof. Uh, and there's apparently not a, not a lot of supply because I only saw four or five bottles on eBay, period. That's it. There's not a lot. And, and one was like Kuwait. One was, uh, um, you know, France. And so shipping is expensive. And so blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Even a first impression of mine can just go on and on and on, as you can see. Uh, but I hope you're taking something and uh you know even if you even if you're not going to go run and buy this right away put it on your to sniff list you know keep a list of stuff that you want to sniff or stuff that if you see at a good price you're going to grab uh because this is one that i have a feeling that you will thank me later on uh and now that i know that this is compared to cocoa and opium vintage cocoa is definitely on my to smell list so um, hope everyone, uh, has a fantastic day and, uh, I'll probably be, be back tomorrow with another video. Maybe my favorite patchouli video. I haven't done a favorite patchoulis yet. So, uh, cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.